Hello boys and girls, welcome back to Room 9 with Dr. Sanders. We're here again teaching some pre-K and K, ELA and math. We're really going to focus on math today for my students in pre-K and K, but remember everyone can, oops, everyone can learn something and that's the goal that you learn something and have some fun. We're going to have some fun. So we're going to get started. Let's look at our Missouri Early Learning Standards or Missouri Standards and see what we're focusing on this week. We're going to listen for different purposes as we do, but we're going to make predictions. We'll do that a little bit later if we get to read a book. And I will explore graphing and data. We're just going to talk about a little graphing, a little data, and how graphing helps you become use numbers easier, helps you understand numbers. Like if you have a group of things... And they give you, let's say you have uh, some Skittles. Let's say you had a bag of Skittles and you want to see how many colors are, um, how many colors, or how many are the same color are in each bag. You can use graphing to, to show you that answer. Again, I work for St. Louis Public Schools and I work at Adams Elementary. Actually, I'm virtually now. I'm virtual now. But I work at Adams Elementary and we're in the largest classroom in the region. And you ready to get started? Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. We're going to start it by looking at a couple of my friends' names. And what we're going to do is just count their numbers, the, the letters in their names. We looked at these friends' names the other day, but we're just going to count the letters in these names. And we're not going to count Leilin's apostrophe. We're just going to count her letters. This is Leilin. This is your name. Say, hey. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. Let's count Leilin's letters. One, two... Three, four, five, six. She has six letters in her name. Oh, that's right. I need to take my hat off, Donna. I'm sorry, boys and girls. Um, Leilin has six letters in her name. Whose name was this? Willem's. Yes, that's Willem's name. Let's see how many letters Willem has in his name. One, two, three, four, five. Six. He also has six letters. Hi, Willem. And we have, whose name was this? Kaylee. That's right. Let's count Kaylee's letters. One, two, three, four, five, six. Kaylee has six letters in her name. Wow, that was interesting. All three of our these friends had six letters in their names. Okay. Okay, yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get started. We're still going. This now, you ready to do some counting? I want you all to count with me. Can you count with me? I'm gonna move move to the side. We're gonna get on our number chart, and I want you to count with me. You ready? Okay, here we go. Ooh, my one is missing. My zero is missing. Come on, zero, where you go? There you go, zero. Something like that. Remember, when we're counting on a number chart, we should try to start with zero because, well, let me get up for a second. Um, we should start with zero because that's when you start counting, you just start at zero. Zero is a number. It's bent over a little bit, but we'll be okay. So here we go. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Slow down a little bit. We're going to count together. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right. Let's go to thirty. You ready? Can you count thirty? It's twenty-one is next. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 29, 30. Man, you all are getting very good at counting. Remember, we're going to stay together. So we all stay together and we count together. Now, let's think about some graphing. What does graphing mean? What do you think it means? Yes, uh, let me show you a graph. Let me show you a graph. Um, and then we'll make a couple. There's different types of graphs, but the main thing about graphs is organizing your data. 
you're going to organize your data. So we had our friends, our friends, we had each had six letters in their names. They each had six letters in their names. So we can make a graph to show that they had six letters in their names. We can say that we can put a line at the bottom and then we can say, uh, make the five, six, seven, We'll do a, we have a five, six, seven, right? And then how many of our students had six letters in their names? Three, right? So we would go up here. Zero, one, two, three. And we would make our, if this was a bar graph, we would make our, Number, see, this shows that six letters, I had six letters, I should write letters down there. And then this is three students had six letters. If we looked at Dr. Sanders' name, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, per, one other, uh, I had seven. So my graph would go up to... one so we look over here this will say students so we say three students had seven one person had this to say students of people and this to say number of letters i should have labeled it you got to make sure you always label your stuff and dr sanders didn't but don't tell anybody this will say number of letters this will say people so it'll be one person had six oh one person had seven and three people had six so that's a graph. But to get my data, I had to look at the names that we were using, right? Let's look at my little, my board right here. Let's look at my fun board right here. You see my board right here? I have a bunch of magnets, but they're all mixed together. So this is my data. This is my data, but how can I organize my data? Yes, the first thing I have to do is what? Yes, the first thing I have to do is sort it. So let's sort my data. Let's get all the things together in the same pile. So I'm going to sort the data like this. I'm going to put my, my yellowish, my yellowish magnets together. I'm going to put my purple ones over here. And then my blue ones right there. So I have my blue ones, my purple ones, and yellow ones. Now I can look at my board and say, okay, I have different color magnets. Are they all the same? No, they're different. I got all my magnets. Now how can I show with numbers, how can I show with numbers how many I have? Hmm, let's think about that. Hmm. Ooh, somebody said use a graph. Right, London, you said use a graph. But we can make a graph just using what I have right here. And then we can label it later. So how about, hmm, how about I put my blue ones all in a line like this? And then I put my purple ones all in the line. And then I put my yellow ones all in the line. And now we have a graph. But these magnets are different sizes. If you look at it, which one has the most? If you just look at it, which one do you think has the most? What do you think, Chloe? Oh, it looks like yellow has the most. But how can we find out? You may be right, because it looks like it's taller than everyone else. Oh, what did you say, Queen? 
Blue? No, blue is bigger. Yes, blue is bigger. So let's, how can we find out? How do you think we can find out which one has the most? How can we find out which? Counting, exactly. So let's count to see which one has the most. So we'll start with our yellow. One, two, three, four, five. So let's write the number five above it. Okay. Now, <laughs> sorry boys and girls, I'm thinking in my head. Now let's count the number of blues. Let's count it together. One, two, three. We have three blues. And let's count purple. One, two, three, four, five, six purple. So if you, if you look at our graph, or you look at our numbers, which one had the most? Purple, exactly, diamond. I'm sorry, exactly diamond, because purple has six of them. It has six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Blue has three. One, two, three, four, five. And yellow has five. But guess what? What if we had, if we made a graph, we could show it a lot easier. If we made a graph, we can show it a lot easier. So I'm going to show you. A graph. We are going to make our, we're going to label our, the highest number was what? Six, right. So we'll go zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the number of magnets, total number of magnets. And this will be the colors. So we had yellow, blue, purple. Now tomorrow I'll do better because I'll make sure I have, I can show you, I should have, what color should, it says yellow, but I should have this in what color? Yellow, right. And this one should be blue and this one should be purple. Okay, now I'm gonna make my graph. How many yellow did I have? Five. Okay, so on my yellow, I'm going to go up to the number five. And how many blue did I have? Three. Exactly had three blues. And how many purple? One, two, three, four, five, six purple. Now let's see. Let's see if I can find my right color markers. I got my blue marker. And then I have my purple marker. Well, you know what? I don't have my purple marker in front of me. So we're gonna make purple black. Don't tell anybody I did that. And then I have my yellow marker to represent my colors. And we can look by saying, okay, we can, the, the graph shows me how easy it is to show which one has more. And which one has more? No, not the black. Remember that's what? Purple, yes, purple had the most. And data, so a graph, a graph it makes it easier to show your data. This says the same thing as this, but we just made it easier. So take a look around, or sometimes, you know, when you're at school and you're, um, when you're at school, even on, on online or virtually, however you teach, sometimes your teacher says, 
Who wants to read, who likes the color blue best? Or who likes the color yellow? And so if you like blue, raise your hand. Ooh, that's a whole bunch of people like blue. Let me count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can't count that high. Not today. So let's just say ten. And when I say who likes yellow best? Ooh. Oh, that was only one, two, three, four, five. Seven people like yellow best. So which one had more? Blue. So that's a we could show that on a card or in a graph, and it'll be real easy. And we'll make some more graphs this week. And um, that sound good? Are you sure? Are you positive? All right, boys and girls. So remember, when you use a graph, it's easy. It's an easier way to show your data or to share your data. Like if you like um, Dr. Sanders today, or if you liked him yesterday better, then you would say, oh, I like today. And then we they could say, okay, we're going to play this one again. We're not playing that one again. Or we want him to read that book again. Okay? Oh, you really like that book or you didn't. It's just the easy, graphing is the easy way to show data. All right? All right, you all been sitting a long time. Everyone, please stand. Never mind. Go ahead and sit down. Never mind. You know, go ahead and stand up. Stand up. There you go. All right. Let's jump up and down 10 times. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, let's do 10 jumping jacks. You ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm sorry, I make too my noises I know are not that funny. All right, let's uh, nod our head 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, sometimes to relax, you can breathe in. Like, breathe in and just take, breathe in. We're going to count to 10. You ready? Breathe in through your nose. Mm. Let it out slowly. In through your nose again, one more time. Slowly out. All right, let's sit down on three. One, two, three. Up, down, up, down. Sit right down on the ground. All right, you ready? We're going to read a book. We're ready to read a book. One of my favorite things to do. And as we're reading this book, we're talking about making predictions. What do you think is going to happen? Hmm. Everybody show me your thinking face. Ooh, those are some interesting thinking faces. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think is going to happen? We have a book. It's called Churchill's Tale of Tales. Churchill's Tale of Tales. Let's look at it. Uh, what do you think you know what's going to happen with Churchill's Tale of Tale? Oh, you see, looks like a pig. Does he, he doesn't he has doesn't have a pig's tail though, does he? Hmm, so you think it's gonna happen? You looks like a tiger tail? You think he's gonna take the tiger's tail? Hmm, maybe. Let's look at a couple pictures. Look at that first picture. What do you think is going to happen, Kaylee? You think, uh, do you think the pig loses his tail? Hmm, maybe. So let's, we're going to read the book to find out what actually happens, okay? This is the what? Front cover. This is the back cover. This is the spine. And the author of this book is Anka Sandu. And the author does what? That's right. The author writes the words in the story. What does the illustrator do, Aaliyah? Yes, the illustrator draws the pictures. Excellent job, Aaliyah. 
And we are reading this with permission from Peachtree Publishing. Churchill was a very proud pig, just like any other pig. This is his tale of tales. Churchill valued many things in life. S smelling beautiful flowers, painting, painting self-portraits, playing classical music, and reading good books. Oh, he's like Dr. Sanders. And he loved to have tea with his friends, Billy and Gruff. But Churchill had one thing that he was prized above everything else, his tail. It wasn't a big tail. It wasn't a fancy tail. It wasn't even a practical tail, but it was his tail and it made him feel great. But one morning, his tail was nowhere to be found. Churchill's, Churchill searched here, there, and everywhere. What do you think happened to his tail? Hmm. Finally, he gave up searching. He was miserable. I just don't feel like myself without my tail. Billy and Gruff came up with a good idea. They gave Zebra a call. Hello, Zebra. We have an emergency. Can you help? Come over. I think we have just the thing. The zebras were happy to help. They had a spare tail for Churchill to try. But the zebra tail didn't feel quite right. Perhaps I should try some other tails, Churchill thought. You see Churchill's zebra tail? Does it look like his tail? So he went to see Peacock. And I thought Churchill was proud before. Peacock gave Churchill a tail that made him feel beautiful. Hmm, Churchill said to himself, I wonder what other tails I could try. A tail from a fish made Churchill feel fantastic. He could do things he'd never done before. He tried tiny tails, spotted tails, snappy tails, and tails that made him feel big. Trying different tails made Churchill feel so good that he didn't have time for anything else. Come and play, Churchill. Not even for his old friends. Now, thought Churchill, it's time for something very special. So he went to Tiger's house. Tiger's tails were very, really very super. I feel fierce, said Churchill. I'm the world's strongest, bravest pig. He said, I'm not scared of anything. I am totally fearless. But then, a dark shadow fell across his path. Eek! Churchill felt terrified and very alone. What could it be? A giant mean lizard? An unfriendly alien? or a huge, hungry robot with a twisted fork on his head. 
What do you think it is? But it wasn't any of those things. It was just a little bird. What's that on your head, asked Churchill? Is it my tail? Well, I don't know, the bird replied. I found it in a bush. I thought it was a worm, but I couldn't eat it. It didn't look like a flower. It was useless, so I put it on my head. I've grown rather fond of it. Oh, my tail fell off my head. Oh, but it's my very perfect tail, said Churchill. Please, may I have it back? Well, said Bird, if it's yours, then you should have it. Thank you, said Churchill. Finding his old tail made Churchill feel like his old self again. He was so grateful that he helped Bird find the perfect thing for her head. And making a new friend helped Churchill remember his old one. So, so he organized a tea party to bring all his friends together. My dear friend, Sir Churchill, I have been very, have been a very silly pig and a very bad friend. Can you forgive me? And they did because they loved Churchill, even though he could be very silly. From then on, Churchill took great care of his own perfect tail, and he was perfectly happy with it. Most of the time. So, what, what you said, did that really happen? Yeah, I heard somebody say that tale, that he was going to try different tales. Yes. What was your favorite part of the story? Oh, when he tried the tiger tail? He was fierce. Oh, yes, the fish tail was even better. I agree. You should draw a picture of your favorite part of Churchill's Tale of Tales, and then share it. Hashtag 9 Network. And maybe share it so we can see some of those pictures, some of those beautiful pictures. You can show it to me tomorrow. And, boys and girls, guess what? It's the end of the show today. It's the end of the lesson. I hope you learned. Let's make a prediction. What do you think Dr. Sanders is going to work on tomorrow? Hmm. Think about it. Let's spell one more word. What's this number? Nine. And what's this word? That's right. Nine. We, let's spell nine. Nine. N-I-N-E. Nine. The largest classroom in the region. Thank is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.